So this barrel is spilling out a substance called crude oil. Now crude oil is a fossil fuel which takes millions of years to make and it's made from plants and animals that have fallen to the bottoms of oceans and over these millions of years heat and pressure has caused them to turn into this gloopy substance. Now crude oil in in actual fact is, is, is a mixture that's very very important of hydrocarbons. So first of all the term mixture so things that are not joined together so substances not joined together and that's really really important because that means later on that the things this is made of this mixture of hydrocarbons can be separated out and it can be used the term hydrocarbons means they contain only hydrogen the hydro and carbon and the key thing here is they only contain hydrogen and carbon. There is nothing else in them at all. The better term to describe these hydrocarbons is actually the term alkane. Now this is just a, a, a fancy chemistry word to describe a particular family of, of molecules that contain only carbon and hydrogen but where there are only single bonds. So an example would be something like ethane where we have only carbon and hydrogen and we have only single bonds and that's the very very important thing now alkanes have what's called a general formula so if I were to draw one more alkane first methane the general formula for all alkanes is CN H2N plus 2 now what that means is you take the number of carbons, so we'll use methane first of all, a substance we've probably all heard of. So we take methane with one carbon, so N is 1. H, so the number of H's therefore, we've got C is going to be 1. The number of H's is 2 times N, so 2 times 1, add 2. And that equals 4, which is exactly what we have, C, H, 4. Over here on this side, N is now 2. So we do 2 times 2, add 2, and that gives us 6. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is exactly what we have. So C286 is our formula here. So, as I said up here, we have a mixture of hydrocarbons, which means we can separate them. Now, why would we bother separating them? Well, crude oil is very very profitable if a country has crude oil reserves there's a lot of money that it can make but the crude oil itself is fairly useless it's actually the stuff within it that we want stuff like petrol and diesel and so we're separating it into these various um, different hydrocarbons different alkanes in order to actually get hold of this petrol this diesel and all the rest of the things so that we can sell them and make lots of money and there's a lot of money to be made so how do they actually separate them there is actually one point to add in here and that's um, specifically how to name alkanes um, or how to draw them from their names and so vice versa really. Um, the way we name any molecules um, that fall under the comp or under the term organic molecules which alkanes do is they're named based on the number of carbons that can they contain. So if they contain one carbon we give them the prefix of meth. If they contain two carbons we give them the prefix of eth and if they contain three carbons we give them the prefix of prop. Now in terms of alkanes which is what we're looking at here they end in ane a n e and so what we do is we put that at the end of our word so it'd be me thane e thane and propane and Again, as I've previously talked about, we have this CnH2n plus 2, so right up into the corner here. So now we can apply this to these names. We can say, well, methane we know has one carbon, therefore it's C, so with n equals 1, 1 carbon, 2n, 2 times 1, add 2, which is going to give us 4. For ethane, we would end up with C2H6, propane, C3, double it, add 2, H8. And then we have to obviously fill in. If this was the sort of the diagram showing the molecule of each one, methane, 
would be a search. Ethane would be like this. And finally, propane like this with the eight hydrogens attached. So we have methane then. Meth giving us the one carbon here. The eth telling us we have two. Prop giving us the three. With the ane dictating that we have an alkane because they end in this A-N-E. So alkanes. If we start at a smaller alkanes this side. So we have small alkanes and we're just moving across to large alkanes. What we find is that the smaller the alkane is, the lower its boiling point. So a lower boiling point, abbreviated to BP. The larger it is, the higher its boiling point, BP again. The reason for that is that the smaller they are, the less strongly they're held onto those around them. It's the sim most simple way to think of that. And therefore the bigger they are, the more they stick to those around them due to the intermolecular forces between the, the molecules. So the bigger they are, the higher those intermolecular forces, and the stronger they're held together. Therefore the more energy that's required to actually separate them. The smaller they are, the less strongly they're held together by the intermolecular forces and therefore the lower the energy required, lower the boiling point. So if our crude oil contains a range going right from small right up to large with varying boiling points, we can separate them. And the way we can do that is we can vaporise our crude oil and if we put up a large tower, something that looks a bit like this, We put the crude oil in as a vapour, so we heat it up very high, put it in here, and it will rise up the tower. Now it rises as crude oil vapour. Now some of the stuff has such a high boiling point that it actually, at this point here, turns back to a liquid and is pumped off at the bottom. Stuff called bitumen. Now you don't need to know the names of any of these, but that's stuff we get off the bottom. Very thick, very gloopy, tar-like. And what happens is as this vapour rises up, it gets cooler. So as it rises, it gets it cools down as a natural temperature gradient. This isn't forced, it just happens naturally as it goes from the hot bottom to the cool top. The top being maybe 40, 50 degrees. As it therefore rises up and the temperature changes, there'll be points of which these alkanes the hydrocarbons that are within the crude oil, as they rise up, they will reach their boiling point. And when they reach their boiling point, they condense. And as they condense, they can be pumped off. So what we find is the vapour rises, it cools, it hits its boiling point, and it condenses, and, it, and it's pumped off. The rest of it rises up, a bit more condenses and is pumped off. The rest of it rises, a bit more condenses and is pumped off. And this keeps happening until you end up with a gaseous top fraction. Uh, which is sort of natural gas that comes off the top already as a gas. So this thing here is where this process of separation occurs. And actually this process, because we make these things here which are called fractions, we call this process of splitting fractional distillation. And that is this actual process of splitting the crude oil into its separate fractions, the separate parts. So once more, vapour enters, cools down as it rises. As it cools, the various fractions, the various hydrocarbons in here, will reach their boiling point. When they reach their boiling point, they are pumped off. And because there are different boiling points, it actually separates the crude oil into these various, par various portions. The other thing to know is some general trends within this. So if I rub out this portion here, general trends as we go up the tower. So as we go up the tower, boiling point decreases. B 
viscosity gets lower. So they become less viscous. And what we mean by that is something like syrup is very viscous, it's very thick, very gloopy. Something like water isn't very viscous. And obviously going up to the top, something like a gas is not very viscous at all. As we move up, they burn more cleanly. And what that means is that some of these bottom ones, if we were to burn them, burn with a very dirty, horrible, smoky flame. These up here burn relatively cleanly. And actually as we go up, it is they ignite more easily too. And that's crude oil and how we separate using fractional distillation.